Welcome to School Matters, I'm Sean Gilliland. In this edition of the show, we'll take flight at Hungry Creek, check out a unique method of painting at Hermitage High School, and meet Henrico's 2019 REB Distinguished Leadership recipient. All that and much more on the show. First up, we'll join an annual event that gives high school seniors a view from the other side. So that's, that's about everyone I can contact at one point in time. That's every employee who has a contact information. Uh, I ask questions. Good morning, Henrico. I'm Colin Gray, and I'm reporting on Student Government Day. Here I am with Melissa, and who are you shadowing today? Uh, Dr. Drew Baker. I'm shadowing Mary Cox, who is the Director of Elementary Education. Megan Watkins, she's the Assistant County Attorney. Uh, I'm shadowing Dr. Grant, uh, she's the Director of Middle School Education. Right now we're talking about student well-being through social media. Sometimes like that would make you feel like you're in a really vulnerable situation yeah. and that's kind of the opposite of what we're trying to do. Yeah. So what have you guys learned from the people that you're shadowing? Um, it takes a lot to do public service. Like, I didn't expect it would, like this much work would go into working at an office. Yeah, I don't think I realize exactly how much effort um, Central Office puts into just making our schools function every day. So it's been really cool to just um, understand sort of all of the people behind the scenes who make our schools happen every day. Well, basically, I've learned the insides and the outs of Henrico County and like what goes behind it with financing and just how to properly run a school and how to grow Henrico into a better school system. I really like going to the studio and uh, working like on a news anchor. That was really fun. I'm Josh Young. I'm Jordan Harvey and welcome to the special Henrico News Report. So how was your experience in the studio? It was great. I got to see the whole um, HCPS TV studio and where they film HCPS TV. I'm Ariane. And I'm Noreen Kasana. Welcome to a special Henrico News Report. Student Government Day has hit the county school board representatives, principals, judges, and others have been replaced by students. That's right. Students are now in charge. That means the high school seniors are the ones making the decisions. First, let's get an update on the weather. Here's Dion. On today's forecast, we have... I was the weather man. No. No. <laughs> was that challenging for you? Yes, because it's like, put up your right hand, it's to the left, put up your left hand, it's to the right. And up north, back here, we have sunshine. <laughs> In Virginia, down by the coast, Norfolk's looking to have a high of about 63. In the north region, it's going to be thunderstorms. Today, uh, the high is 36, uh, but tomorrow it's going to warm up and we're going to hit 62 degrees. Dunk! by Mr. Hernandez. Next, Charlotte Claude goes down, eyeing the dunk. She looks up, she goes up. Oh, she just lays it in. Next play, Shiree McKeever gets the handoff, and he's in for the score. I had never really thought about how school operates, not just from school, and how there's a whole separate building that manages everything for us. Student Government Day is an awesome opportunity for everyone, and everyone should try and be a part of something like this. You should totally do Student Government Day next year. See you next year. I think we covered everything. <laughs> I hope the kids had as much fun as we did. Special thanks go out to our student shadows and reporters in the field, Colin and Isaiah. Next up, we head to Holiday Elementary, where students celebrated Dr. Seuss's birthday with the help of the Virginia State Police. <laughs> Over at Ratcliffe Elementary, mystery readers stopped by to help mark the special day.
fourth and fifth grade students at Verina Elementary welcomed local authors Richard and Kathy Verlander to their school. They explained the story behind their new book, The Shelter Gang and Their Secret Adventure. Let's listen in. Mr. Verlander and I knew that we wanted to write a book, but we had no idea what we wanted to write about. And you guys maybe have struggled with that as well when your teachers say, can you write a page or can you write a story and you can write about whatever you want. Sometimes coming up with the idea is the hardest part. It was for us anyway. Now Mr. Verlander and I never thought we'd become authors because like I told you we worked at the phone company all those years. It just never dawned on us that we'd be writing some books. But when we started volunteering at the shelter, it kind of like set a light bulb in our brain off. Hey, this would be a great idea for a book. Now, the book, The Shelter Gang and Their Secret Adventure, as you can see, we've got dogs and we've got cats playing baseball. This book um, is, is all about dogs and cats, uh, but it's also got a message. And you kids being a little, the little older group, um, I want you to think about that message. Um, everybody loves dogs and cats, um, but there's also some, some important themes in here. And what I'd like you to think about as we read along, uh, we don't have time to read the whole book, but we're going to read a little. And that's the word teamwork and the word team. And think about what the word team means to you and, and what it means to be part of a team. So chapter one is the breakout. Beagles are escape artists. Anybody here have a beagle? Okay, there's always a few, and if you have a beagle, you probably know one of our first dogs was named Barney the Beagle. And Barney was an escape artist. He was really good at breaking out of things. We couldn't keep him in a pen, couldn't keep him in a fenced-in yard. Wherever you tried to confine Barney, Barney would find a way to get out. So everybody knows that. So it should come as no surprise that each night after Julie closes the door and clicks the lock at the animal shelter, Barney is the first one out. In fact, sometimes his teammates call him Houdini, although he doesn't know why. What he does know is that humans are silly to think that he can't escape from his pen after they leave. It's so easy. What everyone doesn't know is that beagles are also very good baseball players. Barney is, in fact, the star shortstop on the animal shelter team. What? Didn't know about the team? Or that dogs even played baseball? Keep reading. You see, life at the shelter gets boring sometimes. And the animals often get sad and lonely after their human friends leave for the night. They all wish they had forever homes to go to like them. As we move along, um, obviously we don't have time to read the whole book today, but our gang runs off to the ballpark and plays a secret game of baseball. And we're going to leave a copy of our book for your school so your teachers can share the rest of the story with you. Morning, Gary. We are Get School. Dot com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? I got this. <laughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. 
Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchooled.com for more info. from Hungry Creek later in the show. Welcome back to School Matters. Mike O'Neill's painting class at Hermitage High School took a different approach to create some amazing and colorful works of art. Always looking for new things that I can bring into the classroom and share with my students. It helps me with my work and helps me expand my horizons. And I came across this poor painting technique. Oh! I go up just a hair. You can see how that red's already staining. Here comes the cool part. Drag it this way. I'm going to lift and pull back this way a little bit. Yep. And drop it down. It's a mixture of this paint thinner you use for latex paint. It's called Floetrol and Elmer's glue. You mix the two together, mostly Elmer's glue, and just put a little bit of acrylic paint in it, and it gets a really nice liquidy feel to it, and you just stack them, pour colors on top of each other, and then you put a little bit of silicone oil into it. Fractal patterns, that's what is so cool about it. Put some in the corners. What happens is the cup is a circle. So everything spreads out in a circle. And when you pour it on canvas, the paint just does these magical things. The top layer actually sits on the bottom and the bottom layer sits on top and the oil rises up through the layers of paint. And when you apply heat to it, it makes it expand and creates cells throughout the painting, and then you shift the surface and move it around. Anytime I can make a kid go, ooh, you know you've done something, because it's hard to get a wow out of a kid these days. And if you can do it with something like this, it's like, 
I've done my job. <laughs> What a unique way to apply paint to the canvas. Those paintings look fantastic. Back at Hungry Creek Middle, the student projects were soaring to new heights. A few more practice throws. We're going to begin at 1045. We just had really been into making paper airplanes in class, and we just were sitting there one day talking about how we could take it to the next level and give back and came up with the idea to do a paper airplane competition. Dollar per plane to get in, three different types of competitions. Collect the 10 farthest planes. Three, two, one, go! And the winner is... Isaac! Great job, Cougars! In addition to winning those really cool 3D trophies, they also raised $50 for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Don't go away because after the break, we're going to catch up with a new club that's making a positive impact at Jackson Davis Elementary. How well do you know your presidents? Here's a chance to test your knowledge. Can you identify this gentleman? Meet Jimmy Carter, the 39th President of the United States. Son of a Georgia peanut farmer, Carter was the first president to be born in a hospital. A graduate of Annapolis, he earned the rank of Naval Lieutenant before pursuing a career in politics. As president, Carter promoted education, energy conservation, and budget reduction. But his presidency is probably best known for fuel shortages and the hostage crisis. After leaving the White House, Carter worked tirelessly as a humanitarian and earned the Nobel Peace Prize. James Earl Carter, the peanut farmer who harvested peace. Here's another 90 second history report. When it comes to great American fighters, who do you think of? How about Susan B. Anthony? She was a fighter for her entire life. All right, who's next? At age three, she began reading and writing. Later, when she wanted to learn long division, she was denied because she was a girl. As a result, her father started his own school with a woman teacher. At age 29, she connected with her first major issue, temperance. In the process, she met another anti-alcohol advocate, Elizabeth Cody Stanton. Hello. The two would combat causes together for the next 50 years. They even started a weekly magazine called The Revolution to promote their views but their most famous cause was women's suffrage. Susan B. Anthony believed women deserve the right to vote. In 1870, when the 15th Amendment granted the vote to African Americans, she applauded the change, but argued women should be included too. Then she tested the system by trying to vote, a move that got her arrested. Efforts like these made her a regular guest of the jails and a frequent top story. Finally, in 1920, the 19th Amendment granted women the right to vote. Susan B. Anthony died many years before her cause was won, but her inspiration lived on as a symbol for other women to advance and succeed. So here it is in a nutshell. She changed her school because of math. Slavery and injustice earned her wrath. Tried to vote, but went to jail. All because she wasn't male. She wrote the revolution, changed the constitution, and became an inspiration to generations. That's Susan B. Anthony in 90 seconds. to the front. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce to you the 2019 REB Leadership Award winner. We do it together. We do it together every day. 
and I can't imagine another place I'd rather spend from 8.05 to whenever. <laughs> uh, but you guys make it all possible, and we do excellence every day. And I will say, Dr. Cashbell, that excellence here is with a capital E. Mm -hmm. Because that's <laughs> not just what we do, it's who we are. Congratulations on receiving such a prestigious award. Kim Sigler has been principal of Pocahontas since 2009. Welcome back to the show. Students with the desire to improve the looks of the school led to the creation of a new club at Jackson Davis Elementary. Let's take a look. The Dolphin Shrine Club is a place where people meet and then they make our school beautiful. Give me a thumb up if you saw when you came to school two weeks ago on a Monday that there was a new garden out front with bricks around it. It started um, as an idea that uh, was born off an activity I did last year with my class. And we do a lot of research projects in third grade and so I wanted my kids to research Earth Day and find out you know, its origins and how it's celebrated today. And out of that came this idea to do a project ourselves here at school. And um, my class cleaned up the front gardens, added some plants. And after that activity, I had so much fun, and we got such positive feedback from people about what a difference it had made that I thought, you know, this campus is so gorgeous. It could be. So I came up with this idea of an after-school club that would focus on gardening, but also on maybe some art to help the, the school, the overall uh, climate of the school, just look nicer. I participate because it's a fun activity and we bring creative ideas to life. This is a student-centered club. We throw out some possible ideas. We did this in our first meeting and then they brainstormed together. They wrote their ideas down and then they voted on them. It's been really fun to see the kids noticing for the first time, I think, some of the gardens they were so overgrown and hidden by pine needles you couldn't always see them. What I am really loving is that some of the kids that are in the club are kids who never would have participated like in our SCA program, which is our only after school club. And some students that maybe don't always find a place in other areas of the school have really um, just shine, not to be funny, um, but have really found a place to shine in Dolphin Shine with their art ability and really bringing out some of those, those kinds of talents that we don't always get to see in a classroom. Those dolphins are really making great strides to becoming life ready. We're going to close the show with a selection from the middle school band assessment that took place recently at Glen Allen High School. For School Matters, I'm Sean Gilliland. Thanks for watching.